This podcast is proud to be part of the TalkSport Fan Network. TalkSport. Powered by fans. From an early kickoff in the Sunday League to the final whistle at Wembley. From local heroes to international icons, groundsmen to gaffers, grassroots to golden boots. When it comes to football, it's everyone's game. Wherever you're listening across the UK, get your mates together with Carling, the beer of football. 18 plus, always drink responsibly. We're Bet MGM Sports and Casino. We know things aren't always golden. That's why we offer you the tools to keep your place safe. Set timeouts to always ensure you take a break when you feel like you need it. Set reality checks so you know exactly how long you've been playing. And set deposit limits to help control what you spend. Stay golden with BetMGM. Play responsibly. 18 plus. <laughs> on the road shall we wherever you are in the world good morning good afternoon good evening good night and welcome to chickens on the loose podcast live and we are on walsall vs bradford and we are live on x youtube facebook twitch and other social sites so if you're watching on youtube and other social sites get your questions in for the panel get your score predictions in and other bits and bobs and in today's podcast we will we'll, we'll be talking about the post-match Carlisle, the pre-match Walsall game. Also, a bit of a bonus, because we won't be doing a podcast on uh, Monday next week. Uh, we'll be talking about the EFL Trophy versus Mansfield. And today, I should hopefully be joined by Lee and Robbie. Hello. Indeed. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> So, Lee, starting off with you, what was your thoughts on the Carlisle game? Uh, pretty much how I thought it got, to be fair. Um, improved performance. We've been saying all along, certain Mr Walker should be playing from the off and not coming on. You know, I just had an instant impact, didn't they? Cookies first, relatively simple. We went off the boil a little bit, but it was always going to be a game like that. It kind of just went the way I thought it would, and we got the three points, which is always a bonus. Yeah. Uh, Robbie, if you can hear me, what were your thoughts on the game against Carlisle? Yeah, exactly. As Lee said, it were a tough game. We went out to get the three points, which we did. But it wouldn't be a walkover due to obviously the playoffs, a bit of um, end-to-end banter, shall I say. But yeah, we've got the job done. Nicely walker in the midfield, fresh of breath, uh, fresh of breath air, can't speak. Uh, yeah, Sam Walker had a howler, but made up for it with Cookies Brace, which were nice to see him show up as well. Hopefully we improve by there and go on to obviously tomorrow against Walsall. Yeah. Uh, my thoughts on the Carlisle game is Carlisle were very poor at points. They were very lucky to score. Uh, I know Paul Sam Walker must um, what must have been on his gloves or on the ball and it just slipped it to the back of the net. Everybody is human. We are not robots, so mistakes do happen. So I felt sorry for him there, and I'm glad Andy Cook did save us. Uh, Lee, what was your thoughts on the... Because uh, we've had a couple, obviously we're live on X and oh, uh, on TikTok. So we've had people question, what were your thoughts on the Harry Lewis... Performance, the former Bradford City player. I know it's a pickle. I've never been his biggest fan. Is it? He's a work in progress, isn't he? And he very much still is. He's going to be a good goalkeeper, but I, I've always, even when he was with us, had a problem or a, a worry about his mental side. It's been well documented. And he, he kind of, I don't know, he just still did show those same 
flaws, if you like, for me. Uh, Sam, the the handling thing was just the handling thing. They didn't score. We did it for them, which is typical Bradford, I guess. <laughs> just saying that. And Robbie, what about yourself? What what were your thoughts on Harry Lewis? I thought he had a decent game. Um, stopped a back-to-back save, which obviously kept him in it, obviously, at one all. Um, yeah, obviously, nice uh, round of applause for him when he come under the cop. A couple of boos, which obviously you expect from Bradford fans these days. Um, yeah, saw the game for him. Obviously, he didn't get three points for his end. But yeah, I thought he, thought he did well. Obviously, his return as well to Valley Parade. But yeah, I'll, I'll give him an 8 out of 10. And last but not least, what did you think on another former Bradford City player, Charlie White's performance? Woeful. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I thought somebody were going to run on with a wheelbarrow at one point to get him out pitch a bit quicker. He didn't have a good game, did he? He missed an absolute off. sitter, didn't he, in the first half? It was just like, did it come too early for him? Were he still waking up? Were he still on bus? I don't know. No, didn't have a good game, didn't Charlie? He's been a great player, but his legs not there anymore, are they? I don't think. And, Robbie, what were your thoughts on Charlie White? I didn't think he played, did he? No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, yeah, like um, Lee was saying, he did have the opportunity to score an header from across. Um, Miss a sitter, hit the post, but apart from that, nowhere to be seen. Um, just a bad day at office for Charlie White. I'd expect more of him, obviously, coming to Bradford as well, a point to prove. But yeah, just an off day for him. Uh, a couple of Carlisle fans weren't happy with him at the end of the game, but it is what it is. Yeah. I heard uh, Brad Halliday emptied his pockets out and he found uh, a couple of crosses in there and uh, apparently he emptied his car keys, his wallet and stuff, and then he also emptied Charlie White out of his back pocket. So, right, so, moving on now to Walsall versus Bradford, but also, before we do over to that, TikTok, other social sites, get your score predictions in. Thank you for getting a 10.1k on uh, TikTok, but get your score predictions in, get your questions in for Lee and Robbie and other people who hopefully might join soon. So, moving over to Walsall now versus Bradford. The kickoff is at 3 p.m. So it's for Saturday, the 14th of September, 3 p.m. at the Powerland Bas- uh, Basketcot Stadium. The referee is Lewis Smith, and just a bit of stats on Lewis Smith: he's had a cut. He's had six appearances in total. He's had one appearance in the Premier League where he's dished out five yellow cards, no second yellows, no reds, no penalties. In the Championship, he's had two appearances, five yellow cards, no second yellows, no reds, no penalties. In League One, he's had one appearance, five yellow cards, no second yellows, no reds, no penalties. In the EFL Cup, he's had two appearances, three yellow cards, no second yellows, no penalties, uh, no, sorry, no reds and one penalty. Altogether, he's had six appearances, he's dished out 18 yellow cards, no second yellows, no reds, and he's gifted one penalty. So just going into a little bit of insight on the game. Uh, so Bradford City's top goal scorer is Andy Cook who has scored three, who's actually the GOAT of Bradford City. Uh, he's had no assists and he's played five matches. Alan, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, for Walsall, he's had two goals, one assist, and he's played five games. Walsall is playing home against Bradford City. Apparently. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go, insight. So Walsall haven't scored, have scored six goals in their last five matches, haven't kept a clean sheet in five matches, unbeaten in four home games. Bradford have scored eight goals in their last five matches. Andy Cook has created the most big chances of Bradford City too. Andy Cook has the most shots on target per match for Bradford City of 2.1. And then quickly going over to the Sam Parker article on the TNA. And you know I'm like pronouncing names. I am absolutely shambolic. So I do apologise if I am butchering anyone's name here. So the Walsall team... In goal is Simkin, Alan Williams, Ack Blue, Barnett, Jules, Stick, Earring, Weir, Hall and Low, with Clayley, Lacking, Matt, Amber, Johnson, Maher and Hornby. Uh, leading top goal scorer is Nathan Low with three. 
League position six. In the last four games, they have lost against NK Dons. They've drawn in the cup against Burnham. Uh, they've won 3-2 at Chaltenham and Huddersfield, they've won 3-2. And moving on to Bradford City team, possible starting lineups: Walker, DeBate, Bate, Byrne, Kelly, Halliday, Smallwood, Wright, Walker, Adwa, Sanderson and Cook, with Patterson, Poynton, Oliver, Shepard, Smith, Ben and Doyle on bench. Leading top goal scorer, like we said, is Andy Cook. League position is currently fifth. Last four games, Bradford City have won 2-1. <laughs> We drew against Newcastle under 21s in the cup, but lost on penalties. We lost against Grimsby 2-1, and we bet Bromley 3-1. Team news, Cav is still out and not expected back in training until Monday. Lewis Smith from Wigan was in the middle of City's goalish draw against Stockport in December. And for people who bet, the match odds are Walsall 11-8, to City 2-1, to Draw 23 to 10. And last time these sides met, City came from two down to beat Walsall 3 2 in April, despite Jamie Walker's red card. I'm going to have a quick breather. So now we're going to move, uh, let Lee and Robbie take over. So Lee and Robbie, starting off with Lee, what is your thoughts on the Walsall game? Well, Walsall typically a tough place to go. A bit of a bogey side for Bradford down there. Um, yeah, we've had our creditable wins And I'm hoping that uh, tomorrow's going to be no different um, I've, I've bagged us on the golden goal thing For scoring first goal on three minutes So I, I, I think we can do it The referee sounds interesting in that He doesn't give many penalties, does he? So he's like, nice. does he actually referee games or does he just do like the rest of us and watch? I don't know. <laughs> the odd, odd yellow card here and there. He's, he's, I don't know. Interesting. It's going to be, I think we need a tougher ref. It doesn't, it doesn't sound that sort of, because it's going to be a tough game. There's no doubt about it at Walsall. It always is. Always is. Midland clubs aren't they? They're, they're, they're tough. They know the stuff. And what about yourself, Robbie? What's your thoughts on the Walsall game? Just give me two seconds, John. You go to Diane, please. Uh, Miss Diane, welcome aboard. You're sneaking through the side entrance again. So oh, while, Robbie's, while Robbie's doing his hairdo, what were your thoughts on the Carlisle game? At least we won. That's all I'm going to say. I don't want anybody going about my goalies. We won. That's the main thing. Shut them people up about Andy Cook not being able to score so I think they went home with tails between the legs OK and what's your thoughts on the Walsall game Diane? It's a six pointer because they're only a point behind us so I don't know it's going to be a tough game I think tomorrow hopefully he might keep the same team as we played last week so I don't know it's six pointers it'll be a tough game hopefully we'll win them so there we go from an early kickoff in the Sunday League to the final whistle at Wembley. From local heroes to international icons, groundsmen to gaffers, grassroots to golden boots. When it comes to football, it's everyone's game. Wherever you're listening across the UK, get your mates together with Carling, the beer of football. 18 plus, always drink responsibly. We're Bet MGM Sports and Casino. We know things aren't always golden. That's why we offer you the tools to keep your place safe. Set timeouts to always ensure you take a break when you feel like you need it. Set reality checks so you know exactly how long you've been playing. And set deposit limits to help control what you spend. Stay golden with Bet MGM. Play responsibly. 18 plus. Are you now free, Robbie? Ten more seconds. Okay. Bit of filling in. So, with Walsall, I hope we stick with the same team. Uh, we've had a question come through on Twitter. Thoughts on Patterson. We'll get to that in a minute, Oliver. So, with Walsall, I hope we stick with the same team. Uh, they played well. I hope 
uh, Sam Walker has recovered from his incident, what he had. Oh, his accident, shall we say, what he had. So I hope he's a oh, lot better after as my that. dad called him Butterfingers. Yeah, it's like we said earlier, Dan, I think he just had a bit of water, a lot of water on the ball and probably just slipped out of his gloves. People... It was, it was, yeah. it was water. He, he People are ball. human, they're all robots. And, but we were lucky. Andy Cook, absolutely it, it just happens, stuff like that. We've seen it time and time again. Are you free, Robbie, now? Yeah, sorry, just at work. <laughs> no, you don't um, get this on live TV. You don't get this on live radio, do you? <laughs> Apologies. No, uh, going back from <laughs> last year's game against Wolves, so obviously 2 0 down. Uh, probably what, first 20 minutes we was. Uh, pulled it back 2 all just before the break. Uh, I think it was Jamie Walker got a second yellow. Uh, scraped a 3 2 win. I think the ref will be a big issue, I think, for this game coming up, as Lee said. Not many yellows, not many penalties. Is he a ref to obviously play advantage and go from there? It'd be nice to see. Yeah, it's, I don't think it's a walk in the park. I think it will be, a, obviously, a tough game. Um, but, yeah, hopefully we'll get the three points. But, yeah, I think it will be a tough game overall. Anybody got anything else they want to say about the Walsall game? How many are we taking? Is it just 1,200, I think? We've sold 2,000, but tickets... Uh, oh, we've been dished out 2,000 tickets, but I don't know how much has been sold. You have right. to get to the ticket office today before two, but you can pay on gate tomorrow. So, Diane, what do you think the score will be tomorrow? But before we get it, Diane, before we speak, TikTok, X, other social sites, get your score predictions in, and I will read them out. Back to you, Diane. Oh, I don't know. Um, let me think. I'm going to go 2 one us. Do you want to us? Okay. Lee? Yes, sir. Well, I, I missed that because wife were talking to me. <laughs> oh, I blame it, wife, Lee. Score predictions for tomorrow, bud. I'm, I'm looking forward to potentially another 2-1, two, one, but 2-0 two would do me fine. We just need the points at the moment. And as you said, you've got a question about Patterson. I think he's going to get a bit more game time with Walker because Sasevich is out for potentially another couple of months. I got slated for talking about his uh, uh, potential longevity. And there he is, injured again. Awesome. Sometimes I hate being right. <laughs> I know. Uh, Robbie, what about yourself? What's your score predictions for tomorrow? 2-0 uh, no tomorrow for me. And can I get goal scorers off you? Can I get goal scorers off you, Robbie, or are you keeping that close to your chest? Uh, Andy Cook and Jamie Walker for me. What about yourself, Diane? Goal scorers for tomorrow? Just any of them that fight net. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to say goal scorers, just any of them that fight net. And what about yourself, Lee? Goal scorers for tomorrow? I will agree. Cook... To uh, extend his uh, his run at the moment, he looked lean, mean, and keen. Should have had an hat trick last Saturday, but you know, sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. And I think it will tomorrow. Okay, so I'm going to think it's going to be three 0 City tomorrow. Andy Cook going to score the double with Sanderson to score, and TikTok has not let me down today. So we've had Ben on the. Tick, uh, on TikTok, he's going to bra uh, brave it here. Three one city, Sanderson hat trick. Uh, d -d -d bear with me. Let's see if I can find any more because there's absolutely shed loads of comments. Uh, d -d 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 -d. I thought I think no one else has commented. <laughs> ah, oh Zoe, uh, Zoe thinks it's going to be two 0 city, Cook and Sanderson. And just see if there's. Any more cropped in there? I think he deserves a goal as well. Always I Anderson. think it's a good call, Sanderson, to be yeah. honest. He looks good. See if any, anyone put it on there. Right, so before we get to Oliver's question, weather forecast for tomorrow. I have the, I'm going to actually admit something. The weather forecast absolutely let me down the other day. I said it was going to be cracking flags and it ended up absolutely sailing it down at Bradford City for the first couple of games. Just like your MK Doms. Just like my MDA con prediction. <laughs> so I've, I've changed, I've changed provider. I'm going for the good old fashioned BBC, you never lie. 
So, the sun rises tomorrow at 6.40am and the sun set at 19.26 tomorrow afternoon. And I've just looked at the wrong one. May help if. Right, so yeah, sun, sun rises at 6.41, sets at uh, 19.24 tomorrow. So, it's going to start off with a bit of coldness in the air and then it's going to be 8 degrees and it's going to keep going up until 11 o'clock where it's going to hit 13 degrees the sun out and then typically in Walsall the the sun's going to go behind the clouds with a bit of sun appearing again at 7 o'clock and then dropping down to 11 degrees at night and that's your weather forecast. Right, so Diane, we've had a question coming from, I've got two questions actually. One question first of all from Oliver on Twitter slash whatever it's called, X now. Thoughts on Patterson. So, Diane, what's your thoughts on Patterson? If we can keep him injury-free, that'll be good. Um, he is a good player. We just need to keep him in- injury-free this season. And he has been playing good since he's come off the bench and everything. OK. Lee? I like Patterson. I like Patterson. And I think we're probably going to see a better Patterson with Walker playing alongside him. I, I just, I just think he's got the energy. He's got an eye for a goal. He's got an eye for a pass and all, which is something we, at times, badly need. Yeah, I okay. like him. And last but not least, Robbie. It's probably a super sub for me, Pato. Uh, injury known, which obviously we know about that. Obviously, with Walker fitting in now, as long as he keeps fit, I think we've got no problem in midfield whatsoever. Yeah, I'll stick with Walker and Pato for a sub for me. I think Patterson is a good player when he's fit. He can score long-range goals, what I love seeing in football. So hopefully he'll come score some goals when fit. Right, we've had Sophie on TikTok. Uh, Lincoln fan here, thoughts on J. Ben, the defender. So, Diane, again, what's your thoughts on J. Ben, the defender? We've not really seen him play. We only saw him play in the uh, cup match against Newcastle under 21. So you can't really say out unless he gets a game. But it looked pretty good when he's played. He did start for us against Newcastle, didn't he? I can't bloody remember. It's that far back. I know. I've slept since then. I think he did. Yeah, he did. It looked all right once he did. But he's got to sort of like gelling to the team and everything. So hopefully he might get a few a few more appearances off the bench. Yeah. Uh, Lee, what about yourself? Thoughts on uh, J. Ben from... He looks uh, solid. He looks solid. He, he, I thought he was one of the better players at back, to be honest, against Newcastle. Um, we didn't see much in that game of... Uh, now, say it after me, Johnny. Diabati. <laughs> yeah, I've learned his name. I've learned his name now. I've got it down to a team. I... Is the, I heard it over the PA system. It's yeah. like diabetes, isn't it? It's not diabetes. It's diabetes. <laughs> it's not, no. Type 2 or type 1, as a lot of people have said. Yeah, yeah. So he's, he's pronounced The other diabetes. player I like is is that uh, lad from Wigan that came on. He looked class. He's on loan with us, isn't he, for the season? So, I don't know. We, we're well served on bench for midfielders. We've got Poynton that can come on. And we know how good he is. He should be in team, but, you know, we know. Them that know, know. And we know. And Robbie? Yeah, he's only young. Uh, played against under 21's Newcastle. I think he's tw- is he 23 years of age, I think he is. Um, I'll probably keep him for the cup games at the moment. Uh, he can't really change our back five at the moment. I think they've been spot on, especially against Carlisle recently. Yeah, it'd be nice to see more of him, but I think cut runs at the moment for him and then see how he does from there. Okay, right. My thoughts on the J. Ben, I've not... I think he's a good player, but I've not really... I can't quote on it because I've not really seen the player. Right, so going on now to the latest Bradford City news. So, I don't know if you've anyone seen it, but David Sharp who is like the di- oh, director of football, should we say, has been having a chat with the TNA. And uh, one of the, like, going on about 
Uh, Alex Gilead. Uh, so why did the club let Alex Gilead go? It was possibly a most difficult decision. One, because he's been at the club and so long and he's always available and rarely injured. However, we couldn't justify keeping a player again or de- on decent wage when he wasn't making the match day squad. So that quote there, what I've just read out there, you can look at that in a way, but we'll get that in a minute. We've had some quality number eights or tens now. We are ahead of Alex midfield-wise. He was really down the pecking order. His only game time would have probably come as a right-back cover for Brad Holiday, but we didn't want to keep someone on a wage around just in case Brad got injured. That's why we brought a cheaper loan to cover us there. I'm a, I'm a big believer in trying to get your money on the pitch and just hate players sat on decent wage after not making the squad. It's, a, it's frustrating because you haven't got unlimited amounts of money in our league and carry it big squads. The main thing is trying to get value for money and getting on the pitch. So what's everybody's thoughts on that little bit I've just run out there? I read out there. Starting off with Diane. So I'm trying to do me um, Sudoku while I'm talking. Um, I don't know. I liked Alex Gilead, but as he said, if he's going to be the only cover for our white wing back and keeping him, we might as well free the wages up and give him to shows. But I did really like Alex Gilead. And as I said before, it was sad to see him go, but it's one of them things. It's football. You knew that he, he wasn't in the match day squad. So at least he's not being left on the bench or left out of the squad just to warm, warm a seat up in Valley Parade or wherever we are, we might have his wage. So that's one good thing. Okay. And what about yourself, Lee? I, I feel a little bit sad for him because I think he's been uh, done by. He's one of the fittest, well, he is the fittest player in the squad. He never gets injured. He's never let anybody down ever that I can remember. He's not been the most prolific in front of goal, fair enough, but he does the job. Wherever you put him, he don't let you down. Um, I feel sorry for him because he went out of favour with uh, a certain Mr Alexander, I think, he just, which is not his fault. I think, we'll, I think we'll pay for letting him go, personally. I think we'll pay for that. Because he is a good player, a very good player. And he scores and, goals when we send him elsewhere. Do we not remember? <laughs> yeah, true. Robbie, what about yourself? Yeah, I think the kid deserved a lot more. I think I don't agree with um, the TNA on that interview or whatever it was. I think he was cover for a right back, but I think he was cover for a lot of spaces, uh, positions where he'd actually play. Uh, solid number eight, 100%. I'm surprised we did let him go. Obviously, we've got Dane Oliver coming back on such a high wage as well. Other players, what we should have got rid of, personally. But I think the kid deserved League One 100%, same with Jake Young. But yeah, I think it'll bite us in the bum in a couple of months' time. So, yeah, I think I'll miss him. Well, I'll miss him anyway. I agree on both of those, personally. So, yeah. so that set me up uh, really well, Robbie, for the next question I'm going to ask you. But that, uh, so then. My thoughts on this, If tell me if I'm wrong if I've read this article wrong, but it seems like he's saying that his wage was too big for the club and they, they didn't want a guy on high wages sitting on the bench basically draining the wages. Uh, Robbie, you got your hand up, mate? Yeah, they're on a high wage because they get the job done. That's the only issue. And obviously, Bradford can't agree with that. Uh, but then Oliver, he did get the job done at the start of the season when he did come. Obviously, went out on loan. Probably the best option for us because we couldn't afford it with the situation we're in. But I think with Gilead, I think you pay the high price to get the high quality player you get. And I think Alex Gilead was a high quality player we actually had. Who actually gave us the motivation. Uh, last couple of winners, obviously, against Grimsby, one of them what I remembered when he passed to point. And he's the pick is always in the right position, always gets you forward. I've never seen him pass back as well when we did have him. But yeah, I think, I think you pay, obviously, high wage for a decent player. Look at Cook, he shows up. Gilead would have been another one. Platt as well, I'm surprised we got rid of Platt. I'm still shocked to this day why we got rid of him. The amount of Notts County fans what have come into my TikTok live example and said what a player he is, and I'm like, yeah, he is. But obviously, managers see different, somewhat what we we don't see as a fan. But yeah, just go from there, I guess. So, Robbie set me up uh, with a pinpoint pass here. So, what about Jake? Uh, can yeah, I just, 
the Dane Oliver would have been the logical one to go. I would have said. It's done nothing for us, really, has it? We're still living from the James Anson and Naki Wells hype at the top. That's what we're thinking about. Doesn't yeah, but he's, the Dane Oliver's not an Anson, is it? <laughs> Going, I'll just get you before you jump onto it, Johnny. The, um, Jake Young, in his interview, he said he wanted League One football and we couldn't provide him that. We gave him, what, how many seasons with us? Didn't provide it. Same with Gilead, he probably wanted League One football. Same with Matt Platt. We promised him how long now yeah. for League One and we haven't reached that final destination. So... I think it's their choice. We haven't made that choice to get rid of with a high wage. I think they've chose that for themselves. And I don't blame them. Okay. So just like a Brad Halliday ball to me, what about the Jake Young scenario? Jake's more or less made it clear, or his agent did, that he was happy to stay at Bradford as long as he got a deal that made him one of the top earners at the club. He's done nothing. He had done nothing to justify that here. Our response was for him to prove it first that he's worth it. If you look over the course of his time at Bradford, he only made 16 appearances. And people who love the XG stuff expect goals. Was 4.1. Now, Andy Cook is nearly 4.0 this season, and we are only five games in. Yes, we sat down. We, uh, we, yes, we sit down when players do business for us. But we're not having players just I can't pronounce that word, uh, to us when they've done it for half a season elsewhere. Jake had done it for Swindon. I've seen plenty of players do it there. Harry McCurdy, for instance, moved on and hasn't done anything since. Swindon have a style of play that suits their attacking players. Jake over performance in his XG was quite a lot there. I think it was just under 10 for his starts at Swindon. He scored 16 goals. That don't last at Barrow, when he went on loan, his XG was just one. I hope he does the business at Stevenage, but we can't let players tell us what they want on back of a half a good season when they haven't done it for us. It was an easy decision, in my opinion. It had happened. You don't want a player here that is unhappy because he felt his wage wasn't justified, Billy. So reading that there, that seems like he wanted a high wage and with his performances on the pitch, was sh shocking for us. Uh, so let's go straight into Diane. What's your thoughts on that? Well, if there's like Jake Young stayed with us at the beginning of last season, we might it might have been worth his words because don't forget, Mark Hughes let him go on loan to Swindon. So you can't blame Graham Alexander for sort of like or David Sharp for saying that about him because we only got him back for half a season, and as you said, he got he was injured, so we didn't get to see the best of his ability. Unlike the Swindon lot did, and like he scored goals for fun for Swindon, like he was injured, he never got back from the injury, and if they want to go for higher wage, they've got to, um, they need to go, but if he's getting first team football now, so I wish him well at, uh, Stephen H, I can't even remember where he went then. And what about yourself, Lee? I just think he's always wanted to go, he, he just, Diane's right. Mark Hughes didn't fancy him. Alexander's come in and seen him first hand. All right, he's been injured for a lot of that. They haven't really pulled up any trees, has he? Really, he's just been. It just it's been met, if you want, you know. He's he's just not been at the races. So probably good business getting rid. I suppose if he's happy now. That's what it's all about. If he's happy where he is, good luck to the lad. It's as simple as that. If he don't want to be here, we don't want him here. It's as simple as that. And last but not least, Robbie. Yeah, we can all moan as we want. Um, obviously, going swindling, banging him in. We all wanted him back. Uh, got him back, what, for January? Obviously, nervous of him going. Bit bids coming from wherever, but like Lee said, Mark Hughes didn't want him. Uh, Alexander didn't want him so there must have been some that they've both seen what we haven't um, I think we got the best out of the deal from him obviously a sell on cars six digit numbers which I assume will probably be around about 300k a bit more for 16 appearances for Bradford I think that's probably the best thing out of that um, hopefully he shows up in League 1 who knows but yeah I think we got the best deal out of that but yeah all the moaners say we wanted him back scoring goals but the thing is if he did come back and he didn't provide us the service what he did at Swindon I think we would have lost a lot of money out of him 
yeah, I think we got the best deal out of it. I think we did the right decision to get rid. And yeah, a bit of money in his back pocket, so hopefully get us up the league. And I see we've had Miss Callie and Tony sneak through the side entrance. So starting off with Tony, what was your thoughts on the Carl Lyle game? I thought it was a thoroughly professional performance. I thought we did what we had to do. Knew it was going to be tough. But what pleased me more was every one of them put a shift in. And I mean every one. They grafted. And if we could play like that every week, which we know we will, it's not going to happen, but play like that every week, we should absolutely walk this league. And then same question to Miss Callie. What were your thoughts on the Carlisle game? Uh, sorry for being late, by the way. <laughs> I've had a, an emergency in the field. Um, yeah, um, like Tony just said, every player put a shift in. Jamie Walker, for me, stood out. Um, he run his legs off all 90 minutes, didn't give up. Didn't get, Even if he lost a ball, he didn't give up till he got it back. Um, it, they looked like a proper team, proper gelled team who were going to go far this season to me. And then to Tony, what's your, what were your thoughts on the Carlisle game? Uh, not Carlisle, uh, what's your thoughts on the Walsall game, sorry? Again, I think it'd be another tough game. But if the belief's there and they play like they played last Saturday, then I, can't, I don't see an issue. I think it's another three points hit bag. And same to you, Kelly. What's your thoughts on the Walsall game? Uh, like Tony said, it's going to be tough. Um, I think they've got a big, they've got a big full of confidence going into the Walsall game after the Carlisle game. They've got to be. So I'm, I'm going for a definite win. I think we're going to. I think it'll be a, a, a two. You know what I mean? We'll score. They'll score. We'll score. They'll score. It's going to, I think it's going to be one of them kind of games tomorrow. But I think we'll so. just nick it. What scores are going to be, Kelly? Score prediction. I'm going to go for three two. Tony, what about yourself? Score prediction for tomorrow. Two one. <laughs> okay. And what's your thoughts on Alex Gilead leaving, Tony? Gutted. Gutted. But I just couldn't see where they were going to where they were going to fit in. Uh, and I kept him and had him, but last. Possibly half an hour, but I was gutted that he left. But good luck to the lad, he's got a league at you. And I think he'll do a good job up, Shrewsbury, I really do. And same to you, Kelly, thoughts on Gilead leaving? Um, I'm a bit 50-50 with Gilead because he wasn't always consistent, was he? He had bad games and good games, whereas... I, I'm, I'm assuming Jamie Walker kind of have took his place now. Is that right? Possibly, yeah. Yeah. So, over, over, if I had to pick the two, obviously I'm going to go with Jamie Walker. But, yeah, I'm sad to see him go because he did, he did put shifts in and he was, he was Bradford, you know what I mean? He was, he was always remembered fondly, I think, by Bradford fans. Um, but yeah, wish him well. Wish him well in League One. I think he deserves to be in League One and not League Two like the rest of us. But yeah, good luck to him. And, it's like a tennis match. It's Tony, what's your thoughts on uh, the Jake Young who's now gone to Stevenage? You happy he's Tony. gone? You upset? I was a bit upset, but after reading what Alexander's had to say, uh, I'm not bothered. Good luck to him. There's nobody bigger than club. And, uh, yeah, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit disappointed, but, but let's face it, we managed without him all them months, so... Uh, Sorry. And just like a tennis uh, tennis swing, Cali for the match point. <laughs> what were your, what were your it thoughts? It was in. It was in. <laughs> um, actually, got... Robbie, Robbie showed me a video today of, of what Jake Young has had to say for himself at Stevenage. And I, he's never wanted to play for us, I don't think. He's never wanted to be there. So if that's how he feels, on your bike, mate. We don't need players like that that think they're above everything else. Yeah, he did well at Swindon. Um, and it, no, I, I don't like the guy. I'm sorry. I don't, yeah, he's a good, he's a good footballer, but 
like Tony said, it, it, one player don't make a team, and I think we've got a good team right now. But well, he, before you before you did join Cali, I went through the Jake Young interview with the TNA. All oh, right, uh, not Jake Young. Sorry, the interview with uh, Sharp about basically he got a load of questions thrown at him. It's on the TNA website if you're interested. Yeah, and the yeah. it went about Jake Young and how I read it between the lines were. He obviously did well at Swindon, smashed goals in left, right and centre, came to Bradford, couldn't hit a barn door to save his life. No. So then he's gone in wanting a pay rise, wanted to be a big earner, and then because he's done crap for us, the club have gone, yeah, you're not getting your contract, mate. And then obviously what? Stevenage have come in with the money. Yeah. Gone, yeah, you can have him. Which I is still absolutely don't think right. Time. What's that, sorry, Robbie? I still don't think we gave him a, a long length of time to actually prove to us what is good. He's come back mm. to Bradford with what change of what five players around him probably maybe six. He's got to adjust, adjust probably what two months maybe the longest. I think I think we gave him about two weeks, three weeks to actually prove it. Which, which game did he actually come on the sub for? I can't. Which game was it? Was it Grimsby? It was the home game. Um, I know he came on a cup game, didn't he? Didn't do much. That's it. Yeah, the cup. Yeah. But I still think we could have at least got another month out of him maybe to actually prove. But if he knows his worth, obviously. Um. Okay. Tony says yeah. that no player is bigger than the club, then it's fair no, enough. But I still think we missed a little star there, but I think we got the best deal out of it as well. I think it goes it's back not. all the way to Mr Hughes that uh, just upset him and he's never wanted to be back at Bradford at all. Yeah, I don't but think. Hughes were a morbid little dot, dot, dot. Everybody yeah, but it doesn't make any difference. It has an effect on players that's under him, doesn't it? And he signed him, so... I'd rather have banks any day a week. <laughs> oh, 100%. So, moving on, guys and girls. So, Callie's just in time for, do you want to chat about, shout about, vent about anything, starting off with Tony and working our way across? No, no, really. I think it's all good at the moment. Diane? Uh, no. Me? Hey. Yeah, I just want to throw a thank you out to the uh, to the chickens website people that helped me in a recent acquisition of a scarf, which is a picture now. Badges are being applied. Um, I put a picture up today, so thank you to everybody that that helped me locate that because that's it's not exactly the same as my old one because it's not as long, but six foot seven, you know. Um, I think more, just, um, yeah. Well, I, I just think it'll do more for a, bam, a bad star and, you know, rather a bit of nostalgia. Um, so off. <laughs> just to add a bit of an add to that, if you want to get your sent over to Bradford City, up the chickens on Facebook, get yourself over there. That's the page Lee's on about. Bit of free yeah. advertising thrown in there. Right, Callie, what's your third? Uh, do you want to chat about, chat about, vent about anything? Um, I, do you know what? I haven't got out to moan about today, which is quite good. Because I think we're playing well. And I think we're showing that we can boss this league this season. So I'm quite happy with things at the minute, how it goes. Um, yeah, I haven't got a bad thing to say. Kyle Isle game was rocking. The, the atmosphere, Can I? It was the first time I'd sat in my um, season seat on Saturday. It was the first home game I managed to get to. And... The atmosphere were absolutely rocking. So much better now that they're at side of me in B block. Um, I didn't see any trouble. Nobody were mourning. Nobody were telling anybody to sit down. It was just just bouncing and singing and how, exactly how the cop should be. So, yeah, I'm quite happy. And last but not least, Robbie. Uh, injuries for me. I'd like a um, more update on the injuries. Trapping myself in. Uh, Baldwin obviously been out. Supposed to be four weeks. Nice to hear on the update of him. Um, who else is Asatovic already out, which looks to be an elbow or an arm situation with him. And another one which I haven't really heard much about is Callum Johnson since he's been absolute silence from them. Uh, obviously, loads of rumours going around saying career ending, blah, blah, blah. If it is that, I think Mansfield's done one as, one over as there. But yeah, I'd like, like, cause obviously we've got, well, I can't speak. Like we've got told, we've got more updates and whatever, but I can't really see much of the updates coming out. I've, I've seen one about SARS today that it's not looking good. It's going to be four to five months. 
whatever it is he's got. I didn't, I don't remember what he said he had, but I think it was his knee. I think it's his knee. Yeah. He, he, he with Alexander on his, uh, on his interview, wasn't it? I saw that. Uh, Johnson apparently is running on grass again now, but only with medical staff. But you're right. I'm, I've I've got the same rant, which I would have gone on to say. It's communication from club is just rubbish. Do we even right. count? <laughs> right. Strap yourself in because I've got a vent, and that vent goes to a different Facebook group. What I've seen on social media. And I'm not going to go into detail because I don't want to get myself into trouble. Carry on. But there's a doll, what has been on social media on a different Facebook group. And people have been basically racist, racist to this doll. Uh, I'm not going to go into much, but if you Was it a knitted one by any chance? John, yes, you know a, knitted, yeah. a doll. A knitted, a doll. Like a child's I'll, doll. Mm, oh. I'll, 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 I'll Chat, I'll chat to you after, Kelly. I'm absolutely it's bewildered it's with this. That is on about. So there's a doll, and basically it's not a kid's doll, it's a racist doll. And there's been a lot of racism on this certain Facebook group. And I think it's absolutely disgusting. The club oh. need to act on this. I and agree. people who have been caught commenting on this and saying racist stuff, they need, like the club needs to say, kick it out, report it, get them banned from Bradford City because the comments I read in was bang out of order. And obviously I'll ring in a bit, Callie, and tell you what it is. I'm not going to tell you on the podcast, but Do you know, I'll tell I, you. I, I've got an, oh, Lenny's just, Lenny's just showing me now on her phone. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah, actually. Bring everybody back in. Why didn't nobody tell me? What's on your plate, Tony? No, because it's only quarter to five where I am. I you mute us. Is... I have been going for a to see TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what's uh, what's on your plate, Diane? I've had pizza tonight, a really fancy pizza. You're just having a plain pizza? <laughs> they were pepperoni, actually. Can't go wrong with them meats, can you, Diane? Right, moving on to Lee. What's on your plate? I'm having chowd in the hole, mashed potatoes, and some peas and carrots, and plenty of gravy. Thick gravy. Thick gravy, Lee. Oh yes. Proper job. And just because Cali, just because Cali's here, is it thick or thin sausages? Thick. <laughs> Can't be a big sausage. No. That sounds nope. disgusting. <laughs> oh, don't want all that big sausage. Big hot dogs. Back to the door. What about yourself? No, they're not like bad, and they're chowed in the hole, are they? <laughs> You're going to be battered in a bit, though. Um, I haven't got open plate yet because I'm still at the horses, so I'll, um, I don't I don't even know what I'm having. I haven't even thought about it yet. Is it a vet in attendance? I'll, I'll, I'll message you all individually when I've got it on my plate later on so you, so you all can rest easy tonight. <laughs> what about yourself, <laughs> Robbie? Uh, chicken and mushroom at pot noodle while I'm at work, so I can't complain. Happy days. I should actually ask you, Robbie, what's the what's uh, the odds latest odds from William Hill or other providers? What betting providers you work for? Uh, what on Bradford to get promoted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's have a look here. Just give me twenty seconds. Okay. So while Robbie is doing that, I'll have to do a lot of editing again. Typically, it always happens. A lot of editing skills to do. You love it. I hate editing. I just like to put it out raw and uncut, but sometimes I do have to do a bit of editing. So, Robbie, have we got the latest betting odds to, for Bradford City to get promoted? Not that fast. <laughs> so, have a look here. Yeah. Um, ba -ba -ba so, the outrights, the favourites are Doncaster. Uh, Chesterfield 6-1 to one and Bradford 7-1. to one. Oh, yeah. So... Can we can we name the company, Robbie? What's that at? Still uh, worth a cheeky Mill. fiver then, aren't they? Will the uh, so, three get finish. Get for five on Bradford City to get promoted. Top three finishes 13 to eight. And then for Bradford to finish in top seven is one to two odds on, which is nice to see. And Robbie, I've just thought of a really good feature. Oh, God. <laughs> what I'm introducing next week. Uh, top score, score is Andy Cook, his favourite, is at eight to one. 
I'm I'm having uh, Rob Robbie's betting tech, uh, Robbie's betting tips, and I'll come to you every every Friday, and we can see what betting Zara if you if you're working or not working. Oh yeah, ten dot silences. Yeah, we can go ahead with that. Right, so take two. Thank you everybody for coming along today from Tony, Diane, Lee, Callie, Robbie and thank you very much TikTok. Uh, 10.4 likes on TikTok. If you like what you're hearing, get yourself over to Bradford City, uh, up the chickens Facebook page, get you sent over to Bradford City Chickens on the Loose podcast and our podcast services, also on YouTube and other social sites. Wherever you are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Come on, city. Let's beat Walsall tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your night. Sports and Casino. We know things aren't always golden. That's why we offer you the tools to keep your place safe. Set timeouts to always ensure you take a break when you feel like you need it. Set reality checks so you know exactly how long you've been playing. And set deposit limits to help control what you spend. Stay golden with BetMGM. Play responsibly. 18 plus. From an early kickoff in the Sunday League to the final whistle at Wembley. From local heroes to international icons, groundsmen to gaffers, grassroots to golden boots. When it comes to football, it's everyone's game. Wherever you're listening across the UK, get your mates together with Carling, the beer of football. 18 plus, always drink responsibly. This podcast is proud to be part of the TalkSport Fan Network. TalkSport. Powered by fans.